That's it, we're streaming. Um, Is anyone launching? Oh yeah, we can now. <laughs> now <laughs> have you count. <laughs> now we, uh, your star appeal uh, might uh, actually attract some people. I think I retweeted it earlier. I know. <laughs> no, no, we got a few subscribers on. Um, oh yeah, here we go. So this is now live, and hopefully it'll show some of the comments. The problem is, did you see that when we have the view, mm. it's showing a few seconds later, and yeah. it can be quite confusing. Um, oh, oh, good. So the comments would be here, the chat would be here. Oh, great. Oh, I didn't know if I reduced the window. Excellent. All right. So, Mike, um, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, well, the idea behind the variety show is to have um, videos about what's going on in Bullport Club and Bullport, but also bring in people that uh, have interesting things to say and not necessarily keep it all about electronics. And Mike is the first uh, first guest with, uh, with that, that that is isn't that is a ge external guest <laughs> that I am now uh, trying to to make an interesting conversation with and um, uh, because you know um, not because you're not interested because I am leading it and I need to <laughs> make it interesting. Um, so Mike, you, you you've you have, I mean, I hate to 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 define a person by this, but you have a very popular YouTube channel, <laughs> uh, and you do um, wonderful things. And and I think uh, in the past when we've met and you've shown some of the things that you will show today, I I thought they were incredible, and not only the results. But also the the way you've gone about doing it, and and um, the, it, it it definitely came out of passion. At least the way I perceive it, that you wanted to do it, it was just fun, a thing. You had the tools to do it, you did it, and um, uh, it, I relate to that because a lot of the things I do is I do because uh, I don't want to bore myself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and and you've you have this sort of um, you're in this situation. Correct me if I'm wrong. That you do the things that you you love, that you enjoy. You also get paid for it. Um, some of it, yeah. Some of it. <laughs> but you you are incredibly selective about the work that you you take on, which is um, a very good position to be. Well, yeah, I, I've always been just extremely lucky in that you know I don't. Um, really need the money I could live for quite a long time without earning any more money but you know I, 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 my problem is I sometimes find it a bit hard to say no particularly to an interesting problem um, or just quite often just you know, keeping existing customers sort of thing so I've already got a relationship with them so I you know on any random job from a customer I know I, I, I know that you know the logistics the you know I know they what they're like as a customer and know what you know um, you, you've you've gone through the um the sort of well you've gone through the sort of pre-sale getting to know each other phase yeah you know yeah we, we understand each other they they know that you know they're going to get something that works on time and you know they understand they, what they want to do they're going to pay on time well, usually right? yeah <laughs> but eventually it's on time or eventually yeah well, there's some leeway there right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of but you um but but again i i i i know this from the stuff that i'm doing that um you have to um, discipline yourself and uh, to say no to some projects that you know yeah. they're going to be too distracting it's part of, it's part of that but also just on those I mean I probably turn down at least one job a week I get yeah. random emails and because of the field I work in it's very much sort of artist designers light, lighting designers and everyone seems to know each other they went to the same college or whatever right. and I, I regularly get emails saying you know I'm contacting you because XYZ recommended you and I have no idea who XYZ is because it's a third or fourth hand yeah. recommendation so that, that's obviously a nice place to be in um, but now it's a lot of it is you know we've got some you know what's probably a fairly tedious thing or something they could yeah my speciality is really 
if people can't do it with off-the-shelf electronics, they come to me to design something custom. So I quite often get inquiries that I just reply saying, "Look, you know, just go to the shop, buy this, and that'll do your job, yeah. or whatever." Um, you know, I'm not I'm not into like buying something, selling it back onto someone for X times the price and whatever. It's I find myself often telling people that I'm not the right person to do the job. Yeah, and I say, well, I, I, you'll I, get better I, value elsewhere. Yeah, I wish I had a big list of people who would be the right person for that job. The yeah. problem is that you know I, I don't. The only people that I know that I'd be really happy to recommend are at least as busy as I am. Um, it's incredibly difficult position because people ask you to recommend. Yeah, and you want to genuinely recommend someone because mm. then that what well, not genuinely. Yeah, but I'd you like, know, yeah, I'd love to be out someone that I'd happily say you know. A, who's Definitely. good at it, and B, who needs the money. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of young, yeah, younger pe yeah. people out there who, you know, are trying to save for a mortgage or whatever and yeah. will, you know, quite happily burn the midnight hours that I used to do when I was younger. Um, but, but I just don't really know who they are and I don't know no, I, or I, you know, I don't know enough people that I would be, that I know well enough to rate and to be confident to recommend. But also the, the, the recommendation ends up coming back to you, right? If things didn't work out. It can work be, out, yeah. I, I mean, no, no, no. I, I would never recommend someone unless I was absolutely certain they were... You know, and, but that list job. is incredibly short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and it's hard to recommend some, some people with caveats because that, that comes yeah, exactly, that comes yeah, across yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh, but, uh, but to be honest, know, like, it, it works the other way. In that, if there is someone that I know could do the job, I would sort of do the caveat the other way. I would email them saying, "Look, I've got this inquiry. I don't know much about them. Decide for yourself whether you feel you want to take it." So yeah. it actually works. It's more you know customer recommendation as opposed to sort of consultant or whatever. So how, how do you do? You, um, how do you decide what to say no to? And during your, uh, I think, what, what, what are the determining factors of, of, of saying I, no? It, to a it varies depending on how busy I am, how particularly how interesting the job is. If it's you know, if it's something that I can turn around really quickly, and I mean, basically, I don't, I don't do any production stuff at all these days right. because that's got the long term commitment. They'll say, oh, yeah, we want this prototype. Then okay, you deliver the prototype. Then like six months later, they decide they want to put it in production. Then you've got to you know, remember. Meanwhile, I've done like 20 other jobs in the meantime and forgotten all about it. Yeah. I've also lost interest in it. Yeah. And then you get to the production side of things where it's all the documentation and the approvals and the production drawings and the test jigs and that stuff, which I, yeah, my interest curve just fades off the, you know, the thing that I love and would do all day long is the problem solving and design side of it. Everything else gets less interesting after that. The way I, I, I again, I mean, this is something, I, of course, I don't get contacted uh, many times a week like you do. <laughs> um, I, I say far fewer no's, but um, I, I look at it, is it fair for me to take on this, not fair, but am I going to enjoy it? Hmm. Um, if, do I have, do, is it furthering me towards whatever, I mean, yeah. whatever that I feel it needs to, yeah. to get me to the, today. And then, and then I ask myself, is it fair for the client? Yeah. If I'm not interested, yeah. or I if mean, I'm kind of, eh, then it's not fair for them because yeah. I'm not going to give them that, no. that great. I mean, one thing I've always done ever since I started doing this is that I will never take a job on unless I'm absolutely certain I can do it. Yeah. And sometimes I'll maybe say, okay, let me just take a quick, quick look at it and I'll yeah. maybe perhaps like prototype a little bit or read up the data sheet just to make sure that I totally understand that, that you know, my biggest fear is suddenly coming to a point where I'm just totally stuck and can't yeah. do it. So I will never take on something unless I'm absolutely certain it's doable. Right. Um, so that, yeah, that, that's one field. So for example, if someone email me something that needed some really good knowledge of like mathematics and 3D yeah, yeah. stuff I'd say no sorry I just you know I'm not, not, not a person for that it's like with um, RF design or, or, yeah like RF voodoo like, type stuff I, you know? I, I, when clients go I, mean, I can do it yeah. I, mean, I can do it but the way I'll do it is I'll bring in an expert yeah I'm not. I know enough to know that I'm yeah. not messing but, but around. But also, with you, you also have to know that expert beforehand. Yeah. You know that you know that there is someone. You know they can do it. So it's it, it's that problem. But it's just it's deferring that problem. You know, you wouldn't do it unless you happen to know someone or have yes. maybe chatted with them first before yeah. accepting it. That uh, yes, they can do it. They can do it in the time scale. They can do it at a sensible cost, yeah. etc. Yeah. The the I, I never. I know. I always. I always end up talking to the people who contact me to, if, to see if, if there's anything that I could be helpful with. Uh, there are things like on the architecture level type of help and mm. um, because yeah. a, a, a lot of times <laughs> I, uh, uh, a lot of times I, um, what would end up happening is that, well, not a lot of times, again, a lot of times for me, I guess. Um, 
clients would come over with uh, with a project and somebody or themselves have convinced themselves at some point that they have to go with a particular uh, microchip or a particular technology. They have mm. to have 3G or they have to have Wi-Fi or whatever. And uh, they're, they're stuck in their head with that. And yeah. then I go, well, you know, maybe you need to take a step back and I could do that for you. Um, uh, you know, yeah, looking I mean, at the, your the, problem the, and the, trying to find the right solution. Yeah, and that, that's something that has come up. I mean, probably the most extreme examples I've seen um, quite a long time ago when I was doing sort of more industrial type stuff um, where they've decided they want to use this chip for no other reason that a sales rep gave them a dev kit for that chip. Yeah. That is the only thing. And they've ended up finding something, okay, the sales rep's on the chip, they've done this development work, and then suddenly find, oh, it's on a six-week lead time and the production program will cost two grand and, like, you know, it's... They will make bad, very bad decisions sometimes. Or the, so, uh, <coughs> I, I sometimes like to say that the the, the 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 skills required for prototyping are completely different than the skills required for production. Yeah, yeah. And that crossover often involves Arduino. Yeah. And um, very soon people realize how how limited that. Uh, yeah, that I, I, I do sort of start to itch when people start talking Arduino. Yeah. So I, I sort of predate all that stuff, and uh, I, I've got somewhat. Okay, yeah, it's great that there's a tool that people can get into stuff easy. Yeah. But I mean, my, one of these days I've been meaning to do a video just just entitled Arduino does not scale. Exactly. So yes. you know they, they've done this prototype, and okay, fine, we've got this led on. Okay, we now want to run like five thousand LEDs. It's going to pull like fifty yeah. amps, and no. Sorry, you, you know you, don't, oh, you can't do, be, you can't lash that up with bits of. We need to do a, 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 a remote updates, and we need to we yeah. need to have uh, um, these peripherals, and so like okay, yeah. and then we need to actually dig down into the architecture to 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 get hmm. more. Uh, well, well, like what, what, do it in that well, what I would call doing the job properly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I, I feel that when they come to people like you and and perhaps me, is that that's part of our. Hmm. Um, um, part of the thing that we need mm. to tell them is, is yeah. that is that this Arduino stuff uh, is it fit it's for a production? It's a prototyping tool. Yeah, and that, and you can't, you can't. I mean, there's nothing wrong with you know sticking that. I, I, the one thing that puzzles me is you quite often see sort of products, certainly in the maker space, where they've they've done their own custom PCB, but they've just stuck a standard Arduino board on it rather than yeah. just sticking those components on it. Now. Um, <laughs> I've always thought that's a bit silly, but well, having said that, I did. I, I, I was having a chat with someone at the Dublin um, Hack, Hackers uh, Hack, Hack Day event um, yeah. last weekend, and they said because you can buy these boards so cheap, it was actually cheaper for yeah. them to do that than to buy yeah. the chip to put it yeah. on the board. But it still yeah. it looks a bit silly when you've got this. You know, they, yeah. they've made the effort of doing this custom board out, and they just plonk this off the shelf board on it rather than just well, just stick a chip. It's only a chip, you know, yeah. and you know, stick a TCL two three two header on it instead of because they don't need the USB converter on yeah. there, things like that. Well, that's people don't think the Arduino means different things to different mm, people yeah, but yeah. It, it, the arduino in effect is is a breakout board well no the arduino and is a development system exactly. the hardware is almost the hardware is the hardware is, is, yeah. a, is a breakout board yeah. and the um the the ide the the sort of um uh, abstraction mm. is you know it's it's important to uh, for people to understand that's yeah. not it's it is an abstraction yeah I mean, every programming language is, is, is a mm. form of abstraction, but the Arduino, you're tying yourself into that form of abstraction yeah. that don't, won't necessarily f get you a lot further mm. uh, if you, it, when you need to, to, do, to, to, get, to use another chip or to yeah. use the... Or you need or, like five separate interrupts and two DMA channels yeah. and you know, things like that. Yeah, I've never used the Arduino environment, but I, yeah, from what I've seen of it, it's fine for doing simple things, but once you actually want to start doing anything serious, it's at worst inefficient and, you know, uh, sorry, at best inefficient um, and at worst just hopeless. And, for example, yeah, the fact there's no real debug support, you know, yeah. that, which is yeah, something you really need once you start doing more, more complicated things. I've seen uh, you... you, uh, one of the, you One of the good things that just... Of, of your videos, you you're not you're not tied to any particular. Uh, I mean, you 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 sort of name and shame often uh, any any kind of uh, vendor. Right? <laughs> but you, no, I mean not 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 in not in a bad way, but you, I you say know, what I think exactly because you're not you're not you're not you know you don't have a sponsor or something no. and nobody owes you and you don't no. owe anyone anything and and you'll you'll go about their programmers and, mm. and some of this sort e of equally I'll, you know that, equally i'll praise things that i think are good but yeah, it, what, what the thing i balance. find frustrating is where you see a problem and you know it actually would be a really easy thing for them to fix yeah 
you know, there's just some silly thing in the software. Like a label even on a thing. Yeah, yeah, like you get it's like a program they didn't bother to put, put yeah. pin-out labels on it or say just, you know, an ID or something where there's just some stupid thing. It's not just that they, you know, they didn't get that right or they didn't think of it, but the fact that it would be such an easy thing for them to fix, that's where I find you know, almost anything, whether it's programs or any product or anything, where they've done something which is annoying, not as good as they could have done, which I know as a programmer, as an engineer... Would have would take like literally a few minutes for someone to actually get do better. That's what I find very uh, frustrating. Well, I, I think the main the main issue that the the, the EDA and and engineering development process has been suffering from um, is is just almost complete disregard to user experience. Yeah, and uh, and there's a huge amount of historical baggage as well. Exactly, it's it's coming in and then. It's a little bit perverse in a way because um, I think, well, the software developers about you know, 10, 15 years ago, they started, um, it, it, their tools have, have, have improved. Yeah, because there's so many more people doing it. There's been, the, you know, people realize people, we need to make better tools. Exactly. But and with as the a software data, people, we know how to make those tools ourselves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but also user experience has become a thing that that mm. needs to happen when you're developing something. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the 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 engineering and and uh, development tools haven't haven't gotten there, um, and and even if they do, it's a bit embarrassing sometimes. Yeah. And um, so there's there's like you say historical historical baggage um, that we keep carrying because no tool is ever quite rewritten from scratch no. with, with the UX expert. Yeah. Uh, and so like, okay, why, why are you burying this? Why is, why is this option there? Okay. Let's ask us uh, who, who uses that? Is anybody use it? So just remove <laughs> it, but nothing is ever removed. Or, or the thing you know? that I find actually adds confusion is where there are like three different ways of doing exactly yeah. the same thing. Although like, for example, they'll say a menu with some options or like, uh, some other toolbar with some options and like there is one thing that you can do by three different menus, but one of those paths doesn't give you quite the same option. So you, it's, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. So uh, <laughs> it sounds like you're thinking of a specific example. You've come no, across no. That. I mean, uh, you know, uh, no. Uh, it was it's just frustrating because uh, for me, I went from from sort of engineer to a computer science department, and oh. I realized how good they have it yeah. in terms of um, you know even even things like revision control ten years ago. Mm. E as a software developer, you wouldn't you, you'd go even if you're the the only developer, you'd use revision control. Well, well I wouldn't, but most people would. Yes, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I mean, I'm yeah. saying a software yeah. developer, yeah, 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 right? yeah, software, yeah, yeah. But in 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 engineering development or in, in sort of electronics development, it was kind of this emerging mm. uh, thing. Ooh, ooh. Mm. but in, in the formats weren't there. The the thinking wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, this is frustrating. I can't remember how we got to it and why. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, we mentioned, but th so I think there's there's a there's a lot of potential uh, out there for. Uh, um, for for better usability, but yeah, you know, I think the problem so. is you know it's a lot of work to get it right, and there's there's not a huge market compared to say software. So like for example, if you do like a C C compiler or whatever, yeah. there's like literally millions of people using that. Whereas any hardware tools, I mean, just look at FPGA tools, how terrible they are still because there aren't that many people using it. There's enough enough not enough people. That, you know, okay, the there's that thing. Okay, someone like Zynix, okay, we'll do this fabulous tool, but it's going to cost you ten grand a seat. How many people are going to pay that? Well, there's also um, if there is one case against um, rewriting tools, um, if you piss off the existing users. Exactly. So, <laughs> so somebody's invested fifteen years yeah. uh, mastering that particular way of working, and now yeah. you say like, ah, forget that. We've just reimagined everything, cool. and they go, well, now, now, now I'm. No way. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, so it's almost yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't think there's any real answer to that. You know, you, you do incremental improvements, or you throw it all away and start yeah. again. You, you, you're never going to please everyone. So back, backwards compatibility mm. has been uh, has been a hindrance. Yeah. Um, in in our and always will be. Unless much change. I, look, the software developers don't care about much about. I mean, they do, but yeah, they well, change so, so, tools. Yeah, they yeah, change so, yeah, frameworks. You know, you know. If you're shipping a software product, you know you can make it's less of a, a problem. In you know you can test that it's working more easily. It, there's less of that issue where you've got this. You know you're in production with a product that you're shipping, 
and you've got design files on the side. I think it's software is a, is a slightly different thing. So, so here's in terms here, of longevity and what. The, the, let, we, we can sidestep that yeah. by discussing what we discussed downstairs about uh, the usability of of, um, of distributors' websites. Yeah. Right. That's pure software. Yeah. That yeah. isn't. Uh, there's, uh, there's, there's no. Uh, um, uh, NREs and uh, hmm. and and fabbing and and, and yeah. And, oh, you, you uh, still I suppose you still have to some extent legacy, and you don't have to change the way it works so that existing users get pissed off. But yeah. you can certainly add add extra features. So so why it, why, why, why do very... they why do they? I mean, DigiKey, for example, um, there there's been incremental improvements, hmm. but it's still pretty bad. DigiKey is still streets ahead ahead of everybody else. In the, well, I, I, I need specifically things like. Sort by price at a yes, specific quality. I want a hundred of these. Don't show me anything yeah. that you don't have that in stock, and, yeah. and sort by price at that price point. Yeah. The fact they don't, unlike Farnell, clutter it with all this colour and adverts and rubbish. It's just a plain, simple, fairly quick website. Their parametric search data has been entered by somebody that understands what it actually means. They know that ten millivolts is less than. Five volts, for example. I mean, it wasn't long ago. I haven't checked recently, but oh. RS, yeah, RS would alpha sort a list yes. of numeric values. Yes. yes, you know, you see that sort of just nonsense. It's been, you know, it's not been designed by the people that are actually using. And I think that's still the case. You know, if I, for example, Farnell, you know, I have a list of parts that I want. They're not Farnell part numbers, much as they would like me to have Farnell part numbers on my bill of materials. That's not going to happen. You know, I want a two K two one percent resistor in 1206 or whatever. Now, and they've got reasonably good, I can generally type 2K2, 1206, 1%, and it will get me close there, but DigiKey in particular is a bit bad, and they tell they tend to give you a few me, too many results. So like, if I, if I say 1K, it will also give me the 1K1 and all the other oh, they'll stuff. They'll give you they'll give you all the things that are no longer manufactured, and I think maybe, maybe there yeah, is Yeah, but a, you can click an in-stock thing, yeah. that, 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 that reduces it. But it would be nice to have that as a default rather than the... Sometimes I go to distributor sites, including Farnell, and and thing, and I I want resistors, hmm. right? Jelly bean parts. I, I've I, I've spoken to <laughs> at least two distributors for the specific case of jelly bean parts resistors in particular. Yeah. I want to say, let's say I've got a list of twelve resistors in my product. The first time I search, I want to drill down to find the exact manufacturer and package or whatever. I then want to say, okay, I want this part. I want six K eight. 2.2 ohms, 3.3 ohms, yeah. in that family, please, unless it's yeah. out of stock. Because yeah. the, the amount of just sheer time it takes, I, I sometimes literally resolve to, um, uh, literally, I, I sort of copy the manufacturer partner on them and then, then substitute the actual value. Yeah, that's that. what I do. And it shouldn't be necessary. Because because if you go to farnell.co.uk <coughs> or whatever, and you want to search for resistors, yeah. you'd have to somehow go to products, Passives, yeah. Did it resist it? Yeah, no, I, I, ne I never. I, no. I always start with a text search. Every yeah, exactly. So, it's always a text. But search. if you search resistors, you still get a thing. So what yeah. I do is I go to to a bomb and I put in the part number uh, of a similar part. Yeah. Go there, and then I have that that little hierarchy mm. thing. Resistors. That's yeah. where I click resistors. Yeah, that, that, okay, that's useful done. sometimes. Yeah. And I, you know, obviously uh, the the resistors capacitors. Firstly, they, they, they dominate the bomb in terms of line items. Mm. Uh, I think make it easy. Make make a, yeah. make a, a specific tool for resistors, resistors and capacitors. And capacitors. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, so, you know I, I don't know. I, I, there's no legacy but, but, stuff. I mean, yeah, there's I mean, no you don't. You could actually do something like that quite easily. You get down to a single product, and something like something which you could then restrict a search to that specific product line. So be yeah. it resistors, capacitors, yeah. whatever. It, you know, it doesn't even have to be as specific as resistors. It could be almost anything yeah. where you get, where you have like, for, let's say JST connect. So you, you, you get to a JST XH housing two way and you've got an instant thing to give you the three way, the four way, whatever of that particular part. Yeah. Um, it's sort of uh, being smart about what, to show you that, yeah. they, be like Amazon, where it's kind of well, Amazon. I don't One of the biggest but, problems with search is that you get too many results. Yes. Yeah, you, it's true. If if, um, if 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 they gave you fewer results, but in an ability to, I mean, if they were smart about the results that they show you, or they sort them in a more sensible them. order. Yeah. You know, there's some way literally we didn't understand your inquiry, so here's everything, yeah. which is just totally useless. I'd sooner see nothing than. 
and, and understand, okay, well, it's actually pretty improbable that they don't actually have any 2K2 resistors, yeah. therefore I've maybe not I need to recraft my search, rather than I have to look through like, like 20 different categories. Or, or, or you know, you somehow searched on Google that, that that part you reach that part you know mm. it exists yeah. but you can't find it through their their own yeah. search right yeah. that you can't you, you you because that particular search that did didn't hit that right mm. combination yeah. of or measure. someone mistyped something or there's some, some slight typo or yeah. they've contracted to like yeah. a, a number into two or something um Oh well, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, you know the solution is we're, we're only customers. What do we matter? But I mean, I have had literally dozens. I mean, every like eighteen months, I get a new file rep or RS. And they ring like all bright eyed and bushy tailed. Yeah. So sort of, what can I do for you? And I've now given up. I, mean, I used to spend time explaining what's wrong with their website. How can they, how can they improve it? This is over like, over ten years, and I'm just convinced they don't give a shit, or they yeah. don't. I, I think. They probably don't understand the problem because they haven't sat there. You know, I tell them, okay, look, what you need to do, compile a bill of materials with generic parts, sit down at your website and try to order those parts and see what things don't work very well. Because that's what they'd have to do to really yeah. understand the problem. Or not necessarily them, but... It, Somebody. A, a, pay somebody a, a to do it. expert. Yeah. Running a few experiments yeah, exactly. with other engineers and, and, and distills down all the oh. issues they think, why they think, and they, they need to understand that that affects their, um, um, their bottom line at, at, the, at yeah. the end, right? Because if, if you are shopping for, for certain components and you know that DigiKey is going to give you a much better experience, I'm yeah. not talking about production components, right? I'm talking about 100 off um, 20 items that you're doing for, for, for a prototype, then yeah, they they would want that, but you get a much better experience at, yeah. at digital. I mean, on, I, yeah, there, there's been several occasions where I started ordering stuff from Fardell, got frustrated either with not finding it easily or not, um, uh, or the website being slow. Gone off the digi and just done the rest of the order on digi key. Yeah. If I, if I, uh, yeah, from where I am, Farnell comes tomorrow, DigiKey comes in two days. If I have to get one part from a prototype from DigiKey, I might as well get all the parts from DigiKey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how, you know, Farnell have lost business because of that for me, and RS and whatever, purely because certainly, you know, DigiKey has got the most number of things right. It's still not perfect, but in terms of if I have to go to one website to do a big order, it will probably be DigiKey because their website just works a lot better than most of the others. So we can summarise... That we agree yeah. that uh, the user experience affects where you where where yeah. you shop when it comes to components. Yeah, definitely. So if if uh, anyone, I, I doubt that the distributors are, are listening, but if you do, <laughs> uh, hire a UX expert. Uh, yeah. I know that I know that one company does have one, mm. um, and, and um, but can you imagine working? Can you imagine working at a company like? Fernell arrest and fighting that fighting the good fight from the inside <laughs> about mm. usability. Yeah. Uh, I think there is one other issue is obviously they have different types of customers. They will have like industrial customers have a bit of materials with all the Farnell part numbers and they just press the button. They'll have people that just want to order like uh, more industrial. You know, someone wants to span a big bag of bolts and that's probably a totally different. Yeah, I'm sure RS and Farnell still have people phoning orders through. Yeah, yeah. I'm and no and, so, and I mean, I think obviously they, they have to deal with different types of customers. I think maybe. In some areas, there's perhaps a mindset of how they've always done it, yeah. and perhaps not really looked at the the wider variety of, of their customers to well, see how they'd like to. You know, I think I think with EDA with every with, with and, and with these with the distributors, they have um, they have those um, a certain percentage, say ten percent of the clients that never go to the website. Right? Yeah. they go like and they have their or they ask their rent. purchasing department. Yeah, and they go okay. And and some it's somebody's job to put that in. Yeah. It's like I'm happy with this job, and uh, mm. who, I've I've learned how to use Farnell. Yeah. I don't only order from Farnell. Yeah. And uh, think and and but that the the a lot of their business comes from that. But then there's the the sort of the the long tail of yeah. of, of us. Yeah. <laughs> Small fries putting <laughs> putting in the stuff. We're yeah. complaining. Yeah, but I, I can, yeah my prototyping need aren't a particularly big. Uh, business look, for them, but then I do production stuff as well. Yeah, it, look, if Farnell was not interested in this business, in 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 sending you uh, three, five components next day, mm. 
they wouldn't offer that that yeah. free shipping and all that. They want that business, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and and they can't imagine that all all of us are doing huge uh, mm. hundred thousand uh, mm. thing. Besides, you know, uh, yeah. So, I th- there's a lot of room. Um, there's a lot of room for for improvement, and and I think uh, th- not only room, but there's potential. Mm. If there's if there's a, a, a distribution. Uh, well, I don't know. I, you know no, I've no, been thinking about it for if, they, if they improve it, they will get more business. There's no question yeah. about that. You know, I would sooner order from Farnell to get stuff tomorrow than Digikey the day after tomorrow. Yeah. Or if, it, if that process is as easy. Yeah. And at the moment and it fast. isn't. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, by, easy, I, by, easy, yeah. by easy, I mean fast. It's my yeah. time. Whether it's yeah. you know the, the actual speed of the website or the, yeah. how easy it is to find products. Yeah. Or, you know, imagine the next step. I mean... Uh, it's so it's it's silly to even think that this would be something we talk about today, but that that they have some intelligence in the back end to 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 suggest to you things that you no. might be interested in. No. You don't want that. That would never work. <laughs> that, that's, I'm, I'm, come on, Farnell, try it. Farnell, do occasionally. You, RS, do it. You know, you bought this resistor. You might be interested in something. It's just they try the Amazon. It just no. That would <laughs> call me cynical. I mean, okay. It, <laughs> If I order a plug, <laughs> maybe suggest the mating socket. If I order a connector shell, maybe suggest the pins. Yeah, okay, fine. But, I mean, let's start there. But do you think they'd stop at that? Bear in mind, they're also want to promote the start. You know, they might want to suggest something that's perhaps not the cheapest and the exact thing I want. No, I think I, 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 I don't want that, sorry. Yeah, by all means, so show me a similar range. But... You should have a tick box saying, just don't show me this stuff. I don't want to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, and it should be default. default this, all. You, know, you, know, you know what annoys me? That I get these, uh, I, I still get from DigiKey and CPC, I get those uh, things in the mail, in yeah. the post, yeah. right? Um, and, and disabling that, I think I did it once, and I created another account, and da-da-da-da-da. Okay, so... Um, but the good thing about them, and I still look at them when I get them from DigiKey and uh, thing, is that I uh, I discover I, it's an opportunity to discover the, the, new the, things. The DigiKey one is good because it's your sheet and yeah. literally new product, yeah, new yeah, product, yeah, and yeah. that's it. Nothing and you're more. like, oh, I didn't know this yeah. thing existed. Yeah, that that is the most effective form. I mean, form of advertising is telling you something exists. I mean, I routinely, certainly yeah. if I'm doing DigiKey or um, Mouser, particularly if it's a small order, I will click on their newest products list and just have a look to see if there's anything in. For example, oh, if I no, need to make up the minimum order. You, yeah, exactly. So I, I will get to that in a second. I wanted to. <laughs> they should add that feature. Yeah. Um, so Mouser is quite good because they'll they'll list newest products by week added. They should add the feature the feature like there is an Amazon. I'm not I'm not a I'm not saying but but save for later. Yeah. So once you've gotten beyond the thirty, mm. the the thirty quid or something that you need for the thing, you can save for later for the time that you did. Potential stuff to add. Because yeah, I yeah. end up sp- will spend an hour just f- trying to justify that I need extra yeah. things to go yeah. beyond that, yeah. and it's it's ridiculous. Um, uh, what was I going with? Um, I can't remember now, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, so I want I want I want to talk about well. Oh yeah. Well, I want to say that before there's a, the perverse thing. I said that it's a strong word, um, and but there is this thing where I observed that us engineers kind of enjoy the tinkering, and with EDA tools and all that, they, they, they're inherently broken. Mm. But there is some sort of a pride in 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 in. in in, in patching it all up with scripts and stuff like that. I, I don't tend to do that. I just want to get the job done. I'm, I don't really have much. In, in so, uh, so in some respects, you go like, oh, you know, it's 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 a tool. I'm used mm-hmm. to it. It's uh, I think it's this. Uh, what I I know, that, that, that's the trade-off between spending the time customizing it to do the job and just getting the job done. It's yeah. quite hard to f- figure out where that uh, the optimum. Point so you're going is like, there. well, you know, I'm I'm enjoying fixing this broken thing that shouldn't have been mm. broken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, instead of yeah. Uh, things, you're, you're yak shaving yeah. and all that. I, I actually did a talk at the Dublin on Conference, which I, I, I am going to do as a video, is basically the fact that um, I almost never do a schematic when I do a board layout. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just the fact that design tools in general aren't good at that flow where, okay, you're doing a very layout-orientated thing, and it doesn't make any sense to commit, for example, these pins to these functions before you've actually seen it on the PCB. So I, I do the same, but yeah. because I work with PCB mode, the tool yeah. that I've written that doesn't have schematic at yeah. all. So I, and, and my view is that the, the, the physical form of the board yeah. has the most information. The schematic mm. doesn't have, it, it lacks the physical information. Yeah. So the current uh, flow 
that again came came from the 70s 80s is that the schematic net list layout and yeah. then the horror of uh, backwards and forwards annotation that never quite worked yeah. very yeah. well. So, uh, so if you if you store if you start from from the layout, you have all that information. Right. You can generate a, a net list from the layout. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I actually the, the way I use a tool called PCAD two thousand and six, which when I bought it was called Axel, and I think before that it was Tango, but they rewrote it fully in Windows for Excel and that's very much it starts off as a PCB sort of draftsman's tool and the way the way I do a PCB is I'll place the, the, the patterns now notice they're patterns they're not components like let's say for example it's an 80 pin pick my library doesn't say pick 16 whatever it says 18 pin SO yep. I then fill the value field in as to the actual part number I then I can then rub a band to create next so let's say I've got that pick and I've got to say a connector I can drag a line from one pin of the pick onto a connector it pops up a thing saying, what do you want to call this net? Either I hit return, it calls it net one, two, three, whatever, or I type in something meaningful. So I can have all the components, I can have all the connectivity that I want to commit now, like power, ground, all the stuff that I'm not going to change. I can also do things like, let's say I've got a, these bunch of pins, I want to go to these bunch of things, but I don't care what all they're in. I might, for example, just connect those to free, either to free pads or to a temporary footprint of something else. So I know roughly I can move that bunch around so that I can move things around to get them roughly in the right place and then commit them later. Um, and I'm, cause I mean, with PCB out, placement, placement, placement is That's everything. Right. I, agree. Um, I agree. And, you know, so you can see this rat's nest of nets that, yeah, you've got no choice. So you can move those around, and just the eye is very good at spotting, you know, the density, how th obviously a lot of it's experience as well. You know, okay, yeah. you know, these are going to flow this way. You can visualize that. Yeah. You know, you put these chips there, and that those tracks are going to go there. Yeah, why, why would you why would you commit to um, <coughs> to general purpose IOs? Mm. Yeah, exactly. The schematic. Or for, in my case, I mean, you for want example, to flip the thing, and now you have to change it in the schematic. Yeah, I mean, for example, yeah, lead, lead drivers. Um, uh, yeah, this is a hold third. on, hold on. We're not seeing that view yet. It's probably not quite enough. Long. There we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a 32 by 32 array. It might be better actually shot in the microscope view. Um, and all the drivers are on the back. You know, so I mean, why would I commit it? You know, there is no reason to have, say, driver pin zero on that row and one on that one and two on yeah. that way, because I can just stick a lookup table and sort it all sort yeah. that out in software. Um, it just makes sense. I, I, did, I spent a lot of years doing single layer through whole boards. And even now, I consider having to go to four layers a sign of defeat. Yes. <laughs> it's the same with my fears. Yeah, most of my two-layer boards are basically a single layer with a ground plane and the odd sort of tra trap track yeah. on the other side. Uh, I don't think you've got any particular examples here. That's, yeah, that's, that's a black I, I wanna, I wanna go, uh, let's, let's go to one, <coughs> but I wanted, uh, just as a segue, or something I'm, I'm, I wanted to, to, to ask people when they come, is it um, uh, is a little bit about music do you still listen to, to music while yeah. you work yeah I, I i i have to have something on whether it's right something it's right i used to listen to um, bbc london a lot and music okay. of, of various sorts um, like most of the time um everything from 70s heavy metal to italian traditional folk music to all anything except jazz and classical okay jazz is just music for lifts <laughs> <laughs> there goes our audience. Music. Music. <laughs> no, the problem with jazz is they just take themselves far too seriously. Right. Yeah. Music where the musicians are clear. You know, I go to a lot of gigs, and the best gigs are where the musicians are clearly really enjoying themselves on stage because there's a two way thing between the, is that, the audience. Is that, and you, you, um, you have a different opinion about jazz and blues, right? It's, it's yeah, but blues, it, blues is okay live. It does start getting a bit samey after a while, but it's, again, listening to it record, recorded again, you don't get the At least with blues live, you get that the atmosphere and the, the live. Right. Thing it can get a bit repetitive. So, do you, do you listen to music uh, that 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 you have or or playlists that you created? Or uh, me, well, me, many way? years ago, uh, way before like MP3s, I actually built myself a thirteen hundred disc CD auto changer system that went through the whole house. Had a remote that had a full database of everything on it. <laughs> That's obviously now just a hard disk. Um, I've got. Yeah, all that's on there. But also, I tend to listen to there's a few internet radio stations. Like which? Um, there's a great French one called Radio Sing Sing that plays the most wide range of stuff you can possibly imagine. It's brilliant. They do go a bit jazzy sometimes. French, you said? French, yes. It's okay. I think it's Radio Sing Sing. It's based in, um, so I can't remember exactly where in France, but it's, you know, if you like eclectic music, you know, it, any time of the day you hear all sorts of really weird stuff. There's a an American one called Radio Paradise, which plays some good stuff, um, a bit a bit less varied. 
Um, I'm currently trying to learn Italian. I'm listening to there's an Italian station called Radio Contro, Contro, um, which is they play again a really good selection of music and sort of uh, yeah I'm trying to sort of pick up Italian from the, the speech in right. between it. Oh, I think um, I think it's great to hear hear a language in the background yeah. and then you you're kind of learning without yeah the exactly effort, yeah right? and with the, but also I think it's important to, to listen to if it's something you're interested in. so for example they'll quite often they'll read out a song title in English and translate mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So it's something that you have an interest in. There's a bit of context there. So, for example, when there's an advertisement, you know the context. It's a radio ad. You can get the feel of what the context is and start recognizing some of the words. So I found that quite uh, my, quite my, useful. My problem is discovering new music. I'm, I'm, it's yeah, that, that's my. Yeah, again, that, that's why internet radio is yeah. it, is good for that. I find because I'm I'm stuck in alternative nineties. Yeah. Uh, for me, that's the the yeah. the, the, the latest. Um, only you know, faith no more, rage oh. against the machine, and and and. Uh yeah, I mean, these you know, days I, I'm actually finding a lot of Western music just sounding very same. I, I, I've been finding a lot of things like Eastern European music, and um, there used to be a venue, unfortunately, it's just closed in East London called Jamboree, and they played like um, all sorts of stuff, sort of Balkans, Eastern European, Italian, and they'd have you know, nights for certain things. And I've just gone down there randomly and just found, seen some amazing stuff. It's tiny little, oh, the venue is probably the size of this room, it's a mm. tiny little thing, but unfortunately, they've, they're developing the property and they got thrown out. Flats. Flats. Well, I think it's hosted. There's, there's a bit of a story behind it, but basically, their lease was. Uh, they were about three months off their ten year anniversary. They were going to develop it, but they, th I think, they got thrown out before, so that the planning application didn't have didn't have the fact that there was an existing tenant with a music venue because that oh. might have got classed as a local asset, and therefore the planning permission might have had had to have forced them to include that. So it's, it's oh, all very, it's all very sad. But there's still some like there's a. Um, you know, I like just small stuff in you know some tiny little venue. Just people having a good time is my sort of music. So I I, I now pretty much everywhere listen to I mean, unless uh, I have my own play playlist uh, to to play a rock. Yeah, I, I I used to listen to that. My DAB record um, yeah. thing di died recently. I've I've not listened to a while, but yes, I did used to listen to kind of that. That helps me. I mean, firstly, they play often, uh, not often, quite off, more often than I that I expected. Uh, Faith No More, which is always kind of, <laughs> yeah. but um, uh, they they play the old stuff and they and they play the new, the stuff, new stuff. Yeah, and you know, as a, as a sort of kind of you know grumpy old man kind of thing <laughs> i i go like oh the new stuff uh, <laughs> but, but, you do but sometimes i go yeah, like oh, whoa good, this yeah. is really good yeah. but also old stuff that i didn't know existed yeah you know I, it might be embarrassing here to say but i, I before planet rock i haven't heard i mean i might have heard the songs but i haven't heard of like white snake yeah for example that, uh, that I'm, I'm slightly or saxon, basically yeah or i mean like saxon was the first gig i ever saw yeah um i um when we were at school there was like the there was in my class there was like the new romantic faction and the heavy metal faction yeah. i was very much the heavy metal faction yeah. so it was all the new wave of british heavy metal iron maiden magnum white snake all that sort all that lot we so used to go and see I them like I, with Odeon I didn't know that they yeah. existed you know I, i've, I've you know, I've oh. a mixed kind of where I, where I grew up, and, and then my later yeah. years, and then my later later years. But anyway, the the uh, it's great to know that you, you know you, you hear this song like from from Sex and this uh, Dallas One AM yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, Whoa, this is or the the sensational uh, Alex Harvey Band, Alex Harvey Band yeah. like Midnight Moses. The first, it was it was this guy um, on, on Planet Rock. Uh, damn, I forget his name. He's my favorite. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I must get, get into listening to that. Yeah, but, I, I discovered some really good stuff. You know, I, I was I was in the car and we we're coming back from somewhere, and then this this midnight Moses came, mm. came along, and I, I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is so good!" And uh, so it's great. It it, it gets me thinking. I recently got a car, so there's a DAB. There was DAB mm. there. So like Planet Rock, it never changed. Yeah, uh, it was a bit. It's a bit of a year now. Um, but anyway. It, there's there there is Planet Rock. Yeah, but I must uh, reach in and find and find where it is. I think they moved the channels or something in it. I don't know. I think. Um, I must get back into that. But yeah, very, that's, that's very, really, yeah. But but you do have the music in oh. the background. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. I it, know. Okay, my, my, I, in complete silence, it's probably all the gigs I've been to. I probably get very slight tinnitus. So if it, it's, I, I like to have something sort of filling in. But uh, I, I I feel sort of if there's nothing. Either of speech radio, music radio, it feels like there's something sort of missing. Oh, because you work <laughs> alone, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I know I used to work from home alone, and and um, it can get, I mean, depressing could be, um, 
I, I, strong of a word, I, but it, it can get lonely. I, I, I'm just very used to it because it's what I, you know, when it, the only real job I ever had, I was sort of sharing off with someone he left and didn't get replaced. So I've been very used to, you know, sort of just working by myself. Do, and so you, you're, you're happy with that? It, it's, it's, what, it's the only thing I've known. Okay. Because I think, you know, obviously... If I had to work in the office with someone else, I'd maybe, you know, it might perhaps get annoying or wouldn't feel comfortable. Or so whatever. how do you, do you, do you, do you have these kind of periods where you're like, I have to see people? Of course, now that you are, you're, you're a celebrity, <laughs> uh, you get invited to yeah, all these yeah. uh, that, events. That, that, yeah, and exactly. That, you know? I mean, I suppose to some extent that's probably become one of the reasons I do that stuff as well. It's nice to, because I mean, certainly pretty much you know, even when I was doing like contracting stuff it was quite often I was the only really technical person yeah so it was very hard to find people just to talk about technical stuff oh, and of course um, when, you, when you go do installations you're yeah. actually working with with a, with a group of people yeah, and yeah. all that but so again it's, it's, like it's a, generally you know it's not you know there aren't that many people certainly historically that I've been able to you know, discuss the you know the the nuances of this particular pick or whatever that yeah. that yeah it's quite nice to do that sometimes but yeah I, um, I, I, I I'm I like I like working kind of on my own mm. and being on my my I have a certain amount of of energy for socialization yeah. you know and, yeah. and then so so you know we're speaking now and then we have the meetup a bit later yeah. and that that will cover me for the week yeah in terms of uh, <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> but it, it, when I when I used to work from home alone I it, it it did get it did get a bit lonely, and I realized that. And one of the reasons I'm here with other people, mm. other companies, is that that little um, hey, uh, yeah. having a, have a, a quick chat uh, during the mm. day really helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. It's, just, I, you know, it's so long since I had a real job and had that. It's just really what I've got used to. Yeah, and it's you know I, I don't often go crazy and start throwing things out the window uh, when I'm on my own. <laughs> well, I mean, we did talk about it uh, downstairs. I mean, he, 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 we, when I, I was showing you the mm. workshop and yeah. we were talking about the fact that... Uh, I'm working in a workshop with other people. I think I'll drive yeah. me crazy. So, cause, you know, so there is that, that flip side. Of <laughs> people you, using you your tools. Have, and, yeah, moving, you know. moving it around yeah. and all that. And uh, I've, it, yeah. it just, I, I'm certainly in terms of working. I like to have everything set up exactly the way yeah. I like it. You know, exactly, you know, the right tools, the, whatever, and sort of someone messing with that. I'd, so you, we, we talk about downstairs, the, 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 you had a very nice video, um, probably one of the only <laughs> long videos of anyone that I've seen from beginning to end um, about your, your workshop. Just, yeah, which is a workshop organization, component storage and the like, because yeah. it's something that people ask me about quite a lot. I think it's, I think it's great. It's, it's a good video. I mean, you, you, you you have a reason for mm. the way you do things yeah. and that's very good. And then, uh, but we did, we did talk that we just, um, uh, realized no, says it, it only works when you, it's, it's just you that yeah. you know where things oh, are. Oh yeah, exactly. Cause so you, you have to, if have... You, I've put everything where it is. Therefore I, you know, if you just give me a random part number, I'll generally know whether I'm likely to have, I, I I've used that before. Yeah. Therefore I'm likely to have some, yeah. I know roughly where it's going to be. Yeah. if not exactly where it's going to be. Yeah. Cause I'll see, but as soon as, Either somebody else has put something somewhere, or somebody else has taken some something away. You know, you no longer have that complete knowledge in your head, and and certainly for the you know, you occasionally see people, you know, proposing, oh, "I've got this database with all of my parts." No, you're never going to bother keeping that. Exactly, and, and we were it's trying to do work. that here with Ben and 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 me. I was like, okay, how do we organize and co mm. coming up with things? And for, go produ like, for production stuff, maybe for development stuff, it just doesn't make any sense. It's yeah, just I'm talking with work. production stuff. It's easier because mm. you have. Per, per project box yeah. and so on. And things like have a process of going into production, then at that point you define where these parts are, whatever. But in development, you know, you're buying random stuff from Farno, you're processing stuff. The thing is, stuff, everybody's, everybody, everybody's, everybody's inventing their own method. Yeah. And also, there will be those people who say, like, I invented such a good method, I'm going to create a product around it. Did you see that Kickstarter? They actually mentioned it on the Ampower, Ampower yesterday. Um, it was a Kickstarter a while ago. It was, it was something like a, a set of component drawers with like mo motorized things. So you type a component in it, it would like. Oh, you know, yeah. it, it was totally ridiculous Over and stupid. But, and, uh, but occasionally you see people proposing our parts storage and cataloging systems. Yeah. And okay, there might be a few people to whom that suits, but it's right. You have to have a slightly obsessive nature, I think, to do that. Exactly. You need if you if you already disciplined. Mm. You don't. You don't necessarily need that thing no. in order to organize this stuff. If you need yeah. that, you're not disciplined enough to to <laughs> even use that piece of software. Yeah. Unless there's a boss 
kind of going yeah. like there's a policeman saying uh, or you've got some traceability requirements in some yeah. industry where everything yes. needs to be traced and all yes. that sort of thing yes. that's a whole different ball game alright so let's uh, uh, I, I, no th no, this no. is still about oh no, is there doesn't. more here no it's about the uh, people don't like uh, Amazon uh, style <laughs> thing I'm, it's not what I was proposing mm. but I mean maybe a little bit but uh, do it in a smart way, right? Of course, yeah. uh, the way that works. Um, I will uh, th radio sing the the French radio station. Radio sing sing S I N G. Okay, I'll, defi I'll definitely try. Just that. Google radio sing sing. You'll find it. I'll I'll definitely try that out. Um, all right. So you came to our uh, last meetup, and then we saw you at the on conference. Um, Hackaday thingy uh, mm. last year, and you brought some some things that uh, they're, they're, they're just so good. I, I, I've uh, always got random things in my pockets yeah. to show people. Uh, <laughs> I just emptied them all out on the table so you, know, so you could so look, pick at something and see what you thought was interesting, and some of these aren't mine. I just, I've got a, that's actually a, um, an iPhone PCB that I've got off um, from the. Wait, wait, you're not, we're not seeing it yet. Yeah. Okay, so I want to. Uh, let, let's show us show us what you want, basically, because. That, you know, that, that, um, I picked that up from Scotty, the guy from Strange Parts that like does his own iPhone things at the um, Supercon, how could they, Supercon last okay. year. This, this is just an iPo. You, know, you can buy blank iPhone PCBs in Shenzhen. Oh, yeah. And I just thought this was. I, I, I got excited, wanted to try looking at it through on my x ray machine, but unfortunately, my x ray machine won't really penetrate well. But the, just the sheer density of this PC did you is try just the, uh, what the QR code does? Uh, no, I didn't actually. It's probably just a number, it's only a very small code. But, uh, but just the sheer, yeah, compared to the sort of boards I do, this, yeah. this is just like on a complete other planet, really. Just the sheer. Uh, But, yeah, the, oh, there we go. I don't know how many. I, I'm not sure how many. It's, I think something like eight layers or something. But just the, the fact that, you know, it's just so. You know, so this. it's a PCB. I understand what a PCB is. This is just so far beyond anything I've ever encountered. It's just when you could completely. say anything about Apple, uh, yeah. and, 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 and whether you know, I, mm. I'm not. I'm not you, well, let's leave it for another time. <laughs> uh, but uh, oh, in cool. terms of, of integration, mm. they're they're oh, yeah. they're to yeah, totally well, ahead throw of an them. infinite amount of money as a problem. Yeah, but I love it was that article a few years ago. So you know, you can't do this because you're not Apple. It just go about all these people. You have things like molding and all this technology yeah, that you know. Materials. You just can't do that stuff mm -hmm. unless you throw like millions and millions and millions. Yeah. And of then dollars. you'll have the Kickstarter that yeah. would say, "Oh, we just do it like Apple." Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Uh, but show us the, the kind of the, the light, yeah. The, well, the, 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 this is the, a favorite. The classic. This, this is um, basically how this happened. This started off life as um, it was a commercial project that I did with this uh, semi flexible PCB. This is 0.1 millimeter FR4 what, board. Point? 0.1 millimeter. 0.1. Yes. It's the stuff that it's actually the stuff they use for the inner layers of multi layer boards. Yeah. So it's FR4, so you can process it like FR4, I literally just stuck it down to a bit of standard board with caps on tape. Uh, and this was, um, I think it was like for a film shoot, they wanted some cups with some text scrolling around it. So I, I had some spare boards lying around and I had a piece of acrylic tube that happened to be about the right size and I had a meeting of a load of geeks to go and see that evening. So I literally hacked this together in a day and it's just a sort of simple sand. Everyone seems to be jumping on the sand bandwagon these days. I don't know oh, if yeah, that was, because I also did included this code in the Hackaday badge. So whether that was inspired by that or not, I don't know. But um, it's just quite nice. It's a ple it's a nice sort of pleasing form factor to hold and sort of play. I'm not sure which camera. Oh no, we're, we're not. Yeah, we're I not watching. Think, yeah, no, I'm just. Seeing, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying yeah. to figure out which camera this uh, works best on. But it's uh, just a very sort of, my mathematical abilities aren't that great. It's just a fair. Oh right, very because people simulation. people can't see when it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we can switch here. Let's yeah. switch and show it properly. Yeah. But it, it's just sort of a nice, pleasing form factor. There's, that is interesting. One thing I thought of doing um, a while ago is to add sound. So, like, every collision produces a little click. And mm. at the Hackaday Uncon on, in Dublin last week, about five people said, oh, yeah, you should add sound to that. So I think that, that might happen. But I, I suspect it's actually quite a lot more complicated to get a, a nice effect because of, like, the frame, the timing. And sound is actually often a lot more critical than visual effects, um, particularly in terms of timing and so on. You think, oh, certainly if you took... Take just like videoing things, you think video or oh, video is clearly the hardest one because it's more bandwidth, but actually, mm -hmm. sound 
you know, the ear is, you know, you can get away with murder in terms of, like drop pixels or whatever, but the slightest click in sound, you'll hear mm. it, then timings as well. You know, if you get like a, a few milliseconds of jitter on yeah. on video, you don't notice it, but on sound, yeah. it's catastrophic. So yeah. I think, I suspect it's, I, I'll certainly have a go at it at some point. The other thing I need to add is like a shake mode that it doesn't have, but it, it'll, it'll also, if you just leave it there for a while, it'll just get bored and start sort of fizzing. Because the first time I showed it to someone, we were in a pub, sort of whatever, and we, we just sort of, Everyone ha started playing with it and then left it on the table and it just sat there doing nothing, boring. So I, I've added a mode where over about two minutes it gets more and more fizzy and sort of tries play, to attract attention. Play with me, kind of. Uh, but I, I, I make quite a lot of these slightly ludicrous things which were would be too expensive to actually make as a product. Um, yeah, there's you, two and a half thousand LEDs on there. There's <laughs> two and a half? Yeah. Wow. Um, so, but, but you do have a story about the, uh, the other ones, um, about... About thinking about me taking these. Yeah, I mean, uh, about if I show you the sort of the progression of these, there's a there's a there's a slight sort of previous story bit behind this, which I um, probably a bit too long to go into. But this, this, these are basically 32 by 32 LED arrays. Um, this is driven by an SD card. So this was the first one I actually did this. I mean, actually going back to the let's make up the um, the value for a, a, an order. I was browsing through Mouser one day and. Trying to find something to make uh, make up a value, and that's all. Oh, they do a four hundred two white LEDs. Let's order enough and do a do an array, a nice big array. So um, I sort of did this um, again just to see what it would look like because I had a bit of spare time. And about a week later, I got this was from a UK company called Plessy, who are fairly new in the LED market. They're an old company, but then this is a new sort mm. of division of them. And I got an email from their sales director. Said, oh, you order all these LEDs. What are you doing with them? Which I, I thought was slightly odd that, you know... Oh, you ordered from Digikey? No, it's from Mouser. Oh, from Mouser. But the and they they'd obviously passed that sales contact yeah. on to the manufacturer. Because I had the intention of doing this, and if you know, if it worked out, I'd maybe email the manufacturer saying, hey, yeah. do you want some demos? So it turned I mean, out... It's, a, it, it, it's mildly useful, but also you, you kind of don't want that from happening, right? Yeah, well, I, I wasn't particularly bothered. So yeah, I ended up making about 10 of these for them as show demos, demo units. Right. Um, this is blue, but most of them were done, were done in white. This is a simple case made out of PCB, which was horrifically pain in the bum to, to, to manufacture. And this was like the next version. This is, um, it's basically the same electronics, but the casing is actually made of Corian, which is a material that's used for making things like kitchen worktops. It's like a blend of acrylic and it's not silica, but it's some sort of silica type material. So it machines really nicely. It's got this nice sort of matte soft feel to it and it's nicely translucent. But again, you know, I show this to people and say, oh yes, I love it. It's really nice. But yeah. what is it? It's just, it's just a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought, well, okay, that's probably a bit big to be a wearable. So the, the next one was this. Um, See if I can get this to power up. Maybe we can put this this one of the, this under the microscope so people yeah. can see that. Yeah, it'll be uh, the microscope out a little, little bit. But this is, I think, this is about one point two seven millimeter lead pitch. I think from memory, yeah. and no four hundred two leads. Um, and then sort of the, there was this, which this is like a circular array, similar yeah. concept, um, but more of a sort of size to be wearable. What I want to yeah. do on this again, this is playing back pre-stored content. Um, incidentally, that's this flame footage that's actually um, burning lighter fuel shot at a thousand frames a second, which makes some quite nice content. But I, I'd like to have some sort of self generative thing so to give a more variety, yeah, more variety, so you can have the accelerometer and it'll do some sort of interesting effect based on the motion. Um, and what's inside that is this. So, this is a circular board, it's 16 by 16 with mm -hmm. corners cropped, um, four layer PCB, um, all the drivers on the back. This was an, a rather interesting layout job. This was for the, what this came from. Obviously, the problem with LEDs is current. White LEDs are stupidly efficient, but you still need uh, um, a moderate amount of current. And normal coin cells have got quite high internal resistance. Yep. So I started with this. This is a lithium ion um, 2450 coin cell. So you can get. You so we're like 3.7 uh, or something? Yeah, 3.7 like volts. And you can pull about half an amp out of that if you really want to. Um, so I started with that size, then said, okay, how many LEDs can I cram into that space? Uh, and what is the densest um, line and hole size that I can get from any of the pooling services? Um, which turned out to be, I think it was like a 0.15 mil millimeter drill. But then, then I think we mentioned, I think we, um, you, you either in private conversation or in talk, uh, that you ran into the, 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 via, the vias. Uh, yeah, the, the, the limiting factor is the vias, because I'm not using buried or blind vias. Yeah. 
And of course, because this is a, this is a matrix, a simple it's not Charlie Plex, for instance, it's a simple XY matrix. Um, but the, there has to be a VI at every lead location yeah. to get the, you know, if you, you've got X, X on one side of the board, Y on the yep. other side. So And it has to go to, a, to, 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 the, to the chip, right? It's, uh, well, yeah, the, 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 first, the first thing is that you've got a VI by every lead, and therefore everything on the back of that board has to fit around that, that, that grid. You can move the grid around a little bit, yeah. but obviously because of the lead positions, there's only so far you can move it. So the challenge on this was actually just fitting the parts around that grid and being able to root it. Let's say there's only four layers and the centre layers are basically mo mo mostly did you, did you do kind of VI pad kind of no, thing? Or? No, it, the, the, There are some vias that are very close to pads in yeah. some, some, some locations. So that, 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 was, that was a real sort of challenge on that one. So this... Um, and... The nice to say, the nice thing I like about LEDs is they're so low power, and this 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 will run for three about three and a half hours with this content on that battery. Mm. And this one's got a there's a USB for charge, and also right. um, there's an onboard serial flash, so you can plug it in. It appears as a USB drive. I took oh, right. I took Microchip's file system library and the USB library and sort of munged them together and made made a flash driver for it. So you that, can easily easily change the yeah, pattern. Yeah, but I I, I want to move to something that's got its own self generating content. Um, just to get get a bit more variety, but, but I th I've not costed this, but it's still like two hundred and forty leads, and I think that will still be quite expensive. Yeah, and it's also I'm not happy. I still, it's, I mean, the the aesthetics of it, I'm not that good at mechanical design. I can recognise a nice design when I, I see it, but I have to do a lot of iterations. That, you know, I can't just think of a design and come up with something that looks really beautiful. So this was really a, a minimalist case, which I'm still think is a bit too lumpy. So the next iteration is this one. Um, so the, this, the thinking behind this was, you know, what can we do, do that's still interesting without so many LEDs? So this is basically a 64 LED ring, and we've got an accelerometer, but we've also got a microphone on it, so it's sound reactive. Mm. Um, again, I'm quite lazy in that I designed it, I get it working, I then get bored and move on to something else. So what I actually want to do with this is some sort of like gravity type effects and that, that sort of stuff. At the moment, the content is really just testing the hardware, it's just making the, the size based on the sound and the, the movement Let's based put it on the uh... Yeah. Wow. So this is a lot simpler. It's an 8-bit yep. um, pick, um, 64 LEDs. And the thing in the center is a four the, board, uh, microphone is the microphone. Center, yeah, yeah. One of those MEMS microphones. Uh, one thing I need to figure out on this is charging. Again, this is using a 2032 lithium-ion. Mm -hmm. um, I want to look at doing some sort of wireless charging. The problem is that almost all of this is taken up by this big magnetic battery, so winding a coil around the outside is not really going to work mm. for wireless charging. So I was looking at maybe using like a very small coil at one edge, but I, again, I haven't really got around to doing anything serious with that. But that's sort of... I, I might... Th this matrix, I'm actually getting slightly more sort of fond of this one now. I might at least do a costing on that just to see what I mean, it costs the, the, the potential so, of the of the full array is... Yeah, just, I think so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you... Yeah. I mean, in it, terms of power, you... Well, basically, the full array basically needs a battery that size. Yeah. Whereas this needs a 2030... The, the main thing on this was, yeah, let's get it down to a 2032, so it's a lot... Uh, it's oh, a lot this, is, this runs on a 2032. Yeah. And again, that'll run for about three, about three and a half hours mm. on that, because they, they, yeah, these LEDs, you can run them with like a couple of milliamps or so, and they're, 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 they're yeah. super bright. Um, and the other interesting thing that came out of showing, these, showing this to people is that this one, you know, I quite like the whole diffusion thing, but lots of people said, no, no, we like the effect, yeah, we like the visual effect of being able to see these LEDs. Yeah. Um, so that's maybe sort of changed my thinking slightly. I might be looking at some sort of clear, it needs some sort of casing just for robustness, maybe some sort of clear thing might be the way to go on there, but I'm still... So sort of a, a diffuser that... Um, yeah, or just two options, like a clear and a diffuse. Yeah. I don't know, but I mean, the, I'm slightly stuck on the aesthetic side of things, which is not something I'm particularly good at. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, I, I, was, I wasn't I was sure whether I should, uh, we should discuss this, but w what do you think about the, the kind of work that... Uh, that I do or that we do. I think, I think it's yeah, I think it's really very interesting. You know the fact you're taking interesting forms. Um, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, if yeah, no, no, no. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. I, mean, I, I, I know. You know, people. People have different. I, I, I mean, one of my interests in is using PCBs for things other than electronics. Yes. I mean, one thing that's quite interesting is that I, I often find when I go into a customer that's say doing the mechanical design is 
they don't even think of PCB as a potential construction yeah. material. They'll, they'll go to lengths at manufacturing. Yeah, they'll, the, they'll, they'll the, like laser cut a, pl a plate yeah. of aluminium and have the coal, holes cut. I mean, yeah. The classic example, if you're doing an outdoor installation, you quite often just get these standard outdoor cabinets, and they will sell you a chassis plate, which the idea is, let's say you've got a box that's got, say, a power supply and some stuff on a din rail or whatever. They'll sell you this chassis plate. The idea is you can build all your stuff on this plate, your power supply, your control, whatever, and then the whole thing just goes into the case in one go. And for the same price, they'll sell you this blank steel plate. I can get 3.2 millimeter PCB cut to shape with all the holes drilled in the right place. So if you're building like 10 of these cabinets and you've got like four or five bits to put in this cabinet, just having a plate with all the holes in the right place can save you so much time. And it's, as, it's about the same weight and strength as aluminium. And, and uh, what I observed about, about the, the PCB as a, as a medium, mm. Uh, when, when I first started, is that the the potential, the manufacturing potential is already there. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah they're geared up to making small quantities of these things. Small quantities, yeah. any kind of routing yeah. outside, you yeah. know, um, holes, uh, the, uh, the holes, plated, yeah. uh, all the things. Printing. Printing, the yeah. silk screen, the, the colors, all that is all there, yeah. yet the EDA tools are limiting you to, to uh, 45 degree <laughs> angles and square, yeah. square green boards. Yeah. But the, 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 the it, it's there. It's sort of mm. untapped. In, in a, if you want to kind of put it, and um, so for, I wanted for a long time. I still haven't done that. Uh, is to is to, is to do a like a proper front panel mm. from PCB yeah. uh, instead of you know people would go and, and cut metal for yeah. it and all that. And um, the other thing of doing PCB uh, things with PCB is that the the design is already kind of there, right? So if um, you know your outlines and, and, and things. Mm. It's um, if you wanted to create something that is matching, uh, you don't have to transfer it to another tool. Yeah. Um, we, in my case, when I'm, because I'm using Inkscape and SVG, it's not that it's not mm. that difficult. But with a you know, if you're using Eagle or oh, it would be nice to have a tool that really integrates all that stuff yeah. well. I mean, I suppose with Autodesk buying Eagle, I suppose we yeah, might I see that happening. But I, th what, I saw that the la latest one mm. does have that yeah. uh, a better integration and so on. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the PCB menu. Uh, I, I, one thing that you've said uh, just a few minutes ago that kind of resonated with me is that um, about about that. You know, like oh, so w people go like oh, wh wh what? It's just a thing. Yeah. Right. And and but I. There's nothing I have wrong to with that, with but I think the problem is if you say it's a thing and it's going to cost you some stupid yeah. amount of money, then they lose interest very yeah. quickly. Yeah. I mean, the 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 Bopper Club projects and the stuff that I've been doing before it's a challenge to 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 create things that are interesting also have a good uh good value and um um yeah yeah I mean I I think it but it's also I mean it's <laughs> what you say is is interesting in that you say well I'm not good you, you said it's not my thing the mechanical yeah. side of things well the things it's like, certainly the artistic creative thing yeah. isn't I, yeah mechanical sometimes yeah sometimes I'll go in and sort of my customers done sort of some sort of mechanical jobs. So what used to be piece of, and there's a classic example of that is this. This is the thing I did a talk on at the uh, Supercon. Um, basically, this is a which screen are we on? Uh, okay. Here is this one. one yeah. This is a single pixel LCD that I've used in a few. In, we've used in a few, oh, a few yes. installations. I've seen. Yeah. And this this was like a. Um, what we want to do is actually go into like a two wire suspension type thing. So we have two wires, power and data, and have these things as like a cloud of these things. Um, in a space, this was done for a museum in Denmark. There's a, I think I've got a playlist on my YouTube channel of my, you know, videos of stuff that's not actually on my channel. And there is, a, there, this talk is linked on there. Mm. Um, so I went in and they designed this like acrylic frame, whatever. And I literally went over, went away for a weekend and came up with this design. So what this is, uh, the, the microphone that's on as well, isn't it? Yeah. So what this is, this is, um, I think that's two point four PCB, and it's got. Depth, depth machining. So remember, you oh. think you tend to think of PCB as a a flat piece, yeah. Um, and obviously they route slots in it, but if they just don't set the cutter as deep, you can actually yeah. get depth routing. Some there are even some online services that do. I think Eurocircuits do depth routing as a as a standard option. So this has got a slot slot in one side, so the LCD is actually mounted in that slot, and of course we have the control electronics. On the other side, maybe, see which, uh, 
Right. Yeah, uh, yeah so we have control electronics that takes this two wire, decodes the data and drives the LCD. We have these brass rods that actually are just soldered in to, to hold it all together. Yeah, that's um, the thing. You can solder onto yeah, it. It's a yeah. mechanical thing. Yeah, and there's, there's some. These are some. These are actually surface mountable studs. These come from a company called Mac Eight in Japan. I've got one of their um, sample things. They're yeah, basically wondering all sorts that. of studs and so threads just, and so on. Absolutely which, nothing. The, the, yeah, the, 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 these come on tape and reel. Huh. Um, so you can literally surface mount screw, you know, male and female screw studs into your PCB. So you know we've got this very light. Um, Module where it's literally just the LCD and almost nothing else, and the electronics integrated. Yeah, exactly, or fully integrated. Um, the only the only thing we did do have to do is obviously PCB naturally comes in like although you can get the resist color, you've got the the natural yellow color yeah. of the material. Now you can get colored FR four, but there's quite a big uh, minimum order quantity oh. and um, lead time because obviously if they make it, yeah, it's made up by. You know, basically gluing yes. resin, but obviously if they put ink in that resin, they're then going to clean everything else again, and they've got big batch sizes. So what we actually did is we just went around the side with a big sharpie marker. Yeah. <laughs> Cause there are, I think there are about a few hundred of these. I've so. seen I've seen some um, uh, I've seen some things being sold sold on Tindy, and I'm going like, oh, how did you get all these colors? And yeah. Somebody just used a, yeah, a, a sharpie, a sharpie <laughs> on, the, on the on the white, yeah. uh, which is fine. I, I, I know so I know places you can get black and white. Uncopper clad FR4, but they, I've yet to find anywhere that does copper clad in color. So, um, anything else? What, what about the the the, the badge? I think we talked about the badge. Yeah, that was um, the Hackaday Supercon badge. I've done a video on this. I think it's okay. already. Yeah. So we well, can, I'll link this on wasn't it. sort of huge. Not hugely exciting design wise, it was mainly dictated by just the size of the batteries and the form factor and everything else. So there wasn't that much scope to do anything particularly clever. There's now the, the badge life yeah, stuff, that right? That, 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 <laughs> that all, right? It just seems to have grown it, it, it's, it's like a, it's time, a yeah. thing, right? It's a thing, and mm. I, was, um, uh, I was invited to their, um, uh, to their Slack, and mm. there's lots of activity there, and um. I was uh, partly it was the curiosity. It's like mm. how that how how is this affordable? How could you how make this thing? thing yeah. So uh, I think I, I was asking there. Then you, know, you look was, on Tindy and you think how many? You know why the why have you know something you think is all you know don't think much of someone pay yeah you know, six thousand of these things have been sold. Who's buying this stuff? Because you know being edgy, I I have no clue about sales and marketing. That I have yeah. no interest in that side. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I have no clue as to what the market is for a lot of these things. I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I mean. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if I just stuck that almost as is on Tindy at yeah. like you know hundred quid. I'd probably sell enough to do a batch of them. But so I, 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 asked, I asked on the channel. I said, so what, what makes um, what, what makes a, a bad? What, what, what and you see something like that? You go like, well, this doesn't necessarily have to be a badge, right? Mm. The, the, your, your, the, um, um, the 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 badge that you've mm. just shown, and um, I said, what, what's a badge? You say, well, anything you can hang. So yeah. okay, fine. So you have a you have a a mounting hole yeah. on it, okay. Yeah, well, in this case, the oh. uh, sorry, uh, read it, the, uh, yeah, exactly. So neck interface that, so. <laughs> neck, that is required. The other thing is required is completely underestimating the amount of work, yes, <laughs> and, and going well, well over yeah. budget. There's a few and having, talks on, and, and having, yeah. having, no, having no life whatsoever yeah. other than yeah. doing this. Well, for a while. Classic, there's a talk I saw where they were using the one of the various, yeah. LEDs with a built-in controller yeah. and found that they weren't compatible with their reflow process and they ended up hand soldering some ludicrous number of LEDs on the board because they couldn't reflow them without them. Uh, so the badge life is... is, uh, is <laughs> it's a strange little... But, yeah, very hard to explain to someone that isn't into it. Yes. You know, like, you, you, I, I, I can imagine there's been some interesting conversations at airport security. Yeah. What's this? It's a conference badge. Yeah. Why has it got batteries on it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to, to I wanted to mention uh, something that you inadvertently contributed to um, to one of my designs. Um, this thing is the trophy um, is a trophy for the bright sparks program from uh, electronics weekly and RS and there's a met metal pieces down here uh, back here in a big bracket in order to give it some weight but this is a 2.4 um, uh, PCB with it which is edge plated I know 
what you're going to say. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong, but it's just holes that have been mm. cut through, yeah. right? Um, and um, uh, so I was doing this design. I was finalizing just before our last um, meetup. And then uh, I was talking to, to Mike there. And yeah. we we're talking about mechanical stuff. And... Um, I was saying, well, I'm thinking, not, not, it wasn't specific to this, but then uh, Mike was mentioning that when he does this, um, I was, uh, he, I mean, you're right here, I mean, it's a bit weird, but um, you, you, you add um, ridges to the slot just in case they're not, um, here, you can see it here better, yeah, just in case... Um, to give you a little bit more flexibility. Now, FR4 is very easy to uh, to file. Yeah. So if it do, if it's not quite, if it's right, it gives you the, that little extra rigidity. If it's not quite right and you need to file, it's much better to file these these ridges than to file yeah. that whole that yeah. whole section. And also, if you've got enough length, you you've got a certain spring. So another example of this LCD frame, it only actually contacts the. Um, to point with. Uh, I brought something. Yeah. Here. <laughs> something vaguely pointy and sharp. I uh, moved it. Oh, maybe it's here. No. No. Where did I put it? No, I, I'll use this. But it only actually contacts the PCB, the, the LCD here and here. So, you know, if that's like 0.2 millimeters out, yeah, the, the glass would actually flex that much. So, you know, whereas if I'd arranged it so it was like a, a very solid contact along the whole surface, then. Yeah. It would have been, you know, if the torrents is out, it would have been totally screwed. Whereas, if let's say the gap wasn't enough, it wouldn't have been the other, then the world to just dremel a touch off of the end, the end, yeah. the end of these on. Like, but dremeling, uh, but doing the whole these, length, yeah. yeah, it would have been a nightmare. Oh yeah, yeah. The, so so well, I just wanted to thank you for that because it 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 did come handy. Yeah. Uh, so, well, certainly with yeah, PCB milling, you're never quite sure what the manufacturer's tolerances are going to exactly. be. Exactly. You, you can make a super accurate thing that relies on relying on your CAD, which right. prototypes fine. Yeah. But you, you know, when you when you press that button on the order of a thousand of them, it's the well, you know, because obviously most of the time PCB edge outlines don't have to be super accurate. So your average That's PCB right. manufacturer, they may quote a certain tolerance, but they may not think it's actually that important yeah. if your PCB is like 0.1 millimeter yeah. too big, whereas it might be. Now, now, <laughs> now you're, you're, you're in their kind of, their yeah. mercy kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And, um, so I, I, it, was a, it was a very good yeah. and tiny I, it, Just uh, This is another interesting detail. This is a project which, again, there is a talk on this link. I did it at EMF camp uh, last year. There's a, there's a talk about that, and this is a big project we did in Hong Kong. Um, and one of the details on here is this... this um, Get this this snap in detail. I spent a lot of time. One of the most useful bits of kit oh, I've yeah, I remember this yeah. is a one of those cheap um, thirty forty Chinese CNC engraver, which is brilliant for prototyping stuff like this because you can just do iterate and iterate and iterate and it, it cuts it quite well. So what this does, um, this is it's probably better on this camera. Yeah, so this, is, this is part of a sort of modular system where we have these stars and these uh, lead strips, mm -hmm. and again we've got interconnect with this stuck together with plastic rivets. We're using mobile phone SIM connectors, which th th those sort of contact down onto mm -hmm. pads on the PCB, and there's another PCB oh, acting yeah. as a spacer. That's great. Um, and the, these sort of hang horizontally, and this is the vertical detail, so the cable comes down, plugs and then into you have this a connector. stress relief. We've got a, it, go, it, it goes through the stress relief, and on the other end, it just snaps in. Let's get this in focus. Yeah. So this just snaps in like that. Um, this one's been in and out a lot of times, so it's, it's a little bit loose now. But I mean, with a fresh PCB, this this is totally and to totally mm -hmm. rigid. Um, we did actually put a some holes on there for a safety wire, but I think we actually forgot to put it in when we mm. installed it. <laughs> but certainly on, on, on one that hasn't been in and out as many times as this one, it will snap in and be super super. Um, and again, uh, those holes, solid. those holes, you could have soldered. You could have. If they're not plated, but you could have. Yeah, we could have put a blob of solder or something and, and, and on there. just to make yeah. sure. And, and you, that would be difficult if you've done yeah. it from from plastic. Well, plastic, you would have. Yeah, yeah it's it's such a the the, the PCB medium has such mm. a such nice properties and the manufacturing yeah. also. You don't have to pay extra to mill. Yeah, exactly. To All mill this stuff this comes for free. For yeah. free. Yeah, yeah. 
the it was like issues in that we had different manufacturers making these spacers and the baseboards so the shade of white is a bit uh, different. But yeah, they do. It that, does. It does yeah. happen, right? You, you get you, different. different I, I've white. yet to find a PCB that will take a Pantone or a RAL color I know. spec. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Imagine that. Yeah, well, I'm sure you can. If you if you're dealing with your local, I mean, I, I've got quite a good local um, place called Screen Bond, who are, are very. They, they've been around for like twenty or thirty years. Yeah, oh yeah, we um, talked about that. And yeah, they will do all sorts of weird stuff. They've they've bought custom inks in for me before. Yeah, um, because today they they have a they have a um, a transparent um, base and they mix the color in. I I I I wasn't I don't really know what the pro I've used transparent resist before I don't know how the, how the process yeah, works. Yeah, I don't. I think that they well they can either get yeah. the, the, the. I'd imagine the, normally the they color. buy it ready color, but maybe they can do do. I, I just assume that they got weird color by just taking the standard inks and mixing mm. them or something. But maybe but say so I have used clear resist. Uh, but it w it would be nice color. to be able to define a color well, like print. Yeah. And say this is the color I want. Yeah. But I think we're a bit quite. A few I, years I, think from I think if you're doing a single batch like ER, it's probably not too too big because I think consistency is the issue. Yes. You could probably literally certainly if you're using UK manufacturers, literally mix a color until it looks right and mix enough right. to do that whole batch. So I've had go. I've had that done. Yeah. Um, yeah. With the coasters. Uh, but but get, getting that same color a second Again, time no, is probably that, difficult. What, I, what, what ended up happening is I defined three colors. Yeah. Um, the guy there printed it mm. and then he mixed it and sent me a picture yeah. of, of the printout next to the um, uh, a test um, mm. yeah, swipe or yeah, something yeah. Of, uh, over over the FR four or the mm. copper. It says, is this is this close enough? Is it fine? Yeah, yeah. because I wasn't I, I wasn't it wasn't a brand. Kind of, <laughs> it had to be that shade yeah, of uh, that's uh, that shade. logo or something. Um, cool. Uh, what what else? What what do you what are you working on now? Uh, I'm working on about four things simultaneously. Um, there are three of them are for a couple of major London museums. Um, what else am I working on at the moment? I've been mean, literally the last few days just getting the various production. There's some stuff for a, uh, I think it's a railway station in the US, big sort of rings of LED strip things. Um, yeah, that's the, the, I think the, the, the sort of fairly big projects that all you know. I, I'm doing bits and then I'm waiting for customer decisions, and then so I'm doing I'm sort of multiplexing myself, doing all the stuff that I can get done now, um, while I'm waiting for them to make a decision on something else. So the the certainly one project that will de that will definitely be the subject of a video once it's up and running. So and we, we yeah we joked around, uh, not necessarily with you, but uh, that <laughs> I think I mentioned it that. Uh, there, there's a there's a great business in dealing with your overflow. What do you mean? <laughs> All the things that you refuse to. Oh to right, take yeah, yeah, on, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 there's, yeah, yeah. There's probably like three businesses mm. for for all the things yeah. that you all the bones that you might throw at other people. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> um, but yeah, but they, they they have to be good too, mm. right? They're as good as you. Uh, well, the thing is, on every job is different. So every job needs some different set of skills i mean my my advantage is that i know software i know hardware i know a bit of mechanics yes. so you know i can do the whole thing um and you know it's certainly the area that i've sort of fallen into these days obviously i know that market i know you know how they think how to you know they, they're quite used to my it's the language cynical. isn't it the language yeah. is a thing you, you probably when you talk to somebody from a museum or some some marketing kind well, of thing the, you go like yeah. you change the language generally my customers are usually the buffer between me and those end clients which right. is probably a good thing uh, I tend to have a somewhat cynical attitude to certainly yeah. anyone that t t calls themselves an artist, but they, most of my clients are quite used to me sort of taking the piss out of them. <laughs> <coughs> but I, they probably wouldn't want me to meet their end clients in some cases. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I did have another question in mind. Um, so we're talking about what you're working on now. Um, what about what about the the events that you do? Do you do you enjoy the traveling? And, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's I mean, yeah, yeah, meeting other 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 interesting. Uh, certainly, the supercom was brilliant. Not you know, only part of it was the actual program, but it was like everyone was there. Yeah, Jerry Ellsworth was there. Yeah, uh, and yeah, it's, yeah, all the pe all the cool people were there. Basically, <laughs> Ben Krasnell was there, and just sort of chat, you know ha having I was, like, I was there. having random yeah there. random chats about you know the guy that's got two electron microscopes in his garage and. This other guy that's yeah you know, just done some ridiculous project. It's really, it's really you know, talk be able to talk to people on that same sort of level. Yeah, um, it's, it was it was brilliant. It's really good. Um, well, it's good that you enjoy them. I, I I'm still kind of I don't know. I, 
I, uh, I f for me, I find that there's a lot of there's a lot of prep work ahead of time ahead of this, and then I need to re to to just rest from mm -hmm. all the interaction with people uh, for a couple of days yeah. afterwards. And yeah. it's, uh, I, my problem is sort of, yeah, talking to people all day. My voice sort of starts yeah. going, especially yeah. if it's in a slightly noisy environment. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but it's good to you know. Sort of, I mean, certainly it, for it needs a bit of decompression time afterwards. But it's quite it's certainly fun while it's. Uh, I, I think um, it could be it could be very good to to attend more of these things for mm. the, for business side of things, but yeah. um, there's a, it's a, it's a it's a balance on the uh, on the amount of effort um, and the energy that goes. Uh, yeah. Um, and and you what about your your YouTube channel? Do you, do you, how do you decide what to do? It's, re it's, it's what I feel like. I mean, it's it's very random. It's. A, do I have the time? B, do I have the subject? C, am I doing a video making sort of frame of mind? So, so you, you had, uh, <coughs> I mean, you had the, a Patreon thing. You still yeah, have that? I still have that. Basically, the yeah, I've never intended to like do that full time as a career. Yeah. Um, and I, for a long time, I didn't bother with monetization. But everyone kept saying, "Oh, how can I donate? How can I?" I say, "Okay." Um, about the only thing that that's useful for is like, but it, it raises the threshold of what I'll spend on some bit of random crap on eBay, some like DNA analyzer or whatever. And <coughs> generally, I mean that sort of goes into a pool for say buying stuff or in theory it hasn't actually been used yet but like if, if there's something i need to rent a van to go and get that sort yeah. of thing oh, yeah. um, but I, I quite often uh, a lot of videos i don't uh, i don't charge the patreon because you know I, it, it's not something i want to do for a living yeah, and, and, you, yeah, i don't actually you know need what, the money the, the, yeah and there's also a, the, of course there's a certain kind of commitment and yeah yeah exactly I yeah certainly yeah that's why yeah i wouldn't do like the monthly thing it's yeah. like a per video on yeah, if it's a video that i feel has got enough content to be worth it or yeah. if it's something where i I've paid out money for buying some piece of weird stuff. Then that I'll do it. And and, and the you noticed uh, we're 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 streaming live, and one of the reasons we're doing that, or I'm, I'm, I've decided to do that because I can't be bothered to um, edit. To edit. Anything. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, so how pain. do you how do you handle that? My editing is literally take. Uh, my my problem is that I tend to speak a few percent faster than I think, so there's yes. lots of hesitation and um. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, mine, me too. Fifty percent of my editing is chopping out these sort of um uh, uh, uh. to the point where I can look at the audio timeline and yeah. I can spot them. <laughs> what I want, what, I mean, <laughs> you need a script for that. Yeah, then. yeah. I, what I want, what I want is a video editing tool which will do. Um, speech to text on the timeline, mm -hmm. and we'll do things like automatically select based on like s silence and gaps. So I can click on say a lump of audio, mm -hmm. and it will just strip it, it. Almost all of it is literally chopping the gaps out. That's seventy-five percent of my editing is literally chopping gaps and hesitations. Yeah. Um, and so I did, did the arm again there. <laughs> I do. But, uh, you stop noticing. Um, and yeah, you know, I shoot everything in order wherever possible. Um, so just to keep things easy to easy to edit. Cause if it's if I can't shoot it and edit it in one in, like straight away right. in one day, I'll I'll get bored and forget about right. it. Or so if you shoot one part, then you have to wait for something. Yeah, to happen. and obviously I'll occasionally do the odd insert and so on of stuff that I've yeah. forgotten. But generally, it's it's all done in sequence. Even if it means the video isn't necessarily as career as it, as it could be. You yeah. know, I just don't have the time. To to go through and polish it. Well, one of the one of the th one of the main things that I've, that I, the reasons I do it here is that once it's out, it's out. It's and, out, and yeah. And and uh, there's no way back. You know, so yeah. I say I said end twice now. <laughs> and so if I if this was a, a, a video a recorded video that I was going to edit, mm. I'll go like oh I have to do it again. Yeah. And then I go like oh I did this with my hand. Yeah. I have to do it again. Yeah, I have yeah, to do it again. I'll, I'll shoot something, do something, and then just repeat it. Or if I yeah. you know I, I think I'll. Try to teach myself to at least leave gaps. So I, I add edit yeah. points for things that. Um, so basically, I, I will again, have I will have um, you know thirteen hundred takes uh, <laughs> for, of me doing the introduction. Yeah, and yeah, and, uh, and and each take gets okay. worse and worse and worse unless you do it. And, the first and then you time. get you get hungry and then you get yeah. upset <laughs> with yourself that you can't do it properly and you go fuck. Then you leave it to the next day. And the <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> Enough. And then, yeah. and then, and then you have to smile because oh. even though you're kind of no. uh, know, actually empty the, inside. <laughs> the video that I want to do about doing the um, PCB layout, I've actually got a complete screen cap of an entire board layout process. But that's going to take a lot of editing. Because the one thing I couldn't find is a screen cap utility that would automatically pause when there was no keyboard and mouse movement, which is what I what I really needed. So I've got this huge long thing. That I, I have a I, I have up. a solution for you. Yeah. But it probably involves things yeah. that you don't. We'll have to talk. Uh, I, to no, me, no, what I, I might do is wait till I've got another board layout to do, and maybe do do do, do it again, but with try and integrate it a bit better because it's going to take forever to edit that stuff. So with PCB mode, I can actually do this. Mm. 
if I am disciplined enough to uh, commit every uh, in Git, so everything is in a, repo mm. in a repository. If I commit every um, every every group of changes, then I can run mm. a script that will check out every every step mm. and recreate and take that a screenshot, like and then I can go. I can yeah. But uh, no, it's possible. It's just that yeah. I don't do the. But it seems like you say because. A lot. If I'm doing a real board layout, not doing something with demo, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm stopping and thinking a lot of the time. Yeah. And it just seems to me that it's. Uh, it maybe I wasn't looking that hard on didn't, didn't do the right search terms. It seems an obvious thing for a screen cap thing to only capture when stuff's happening. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe it exists. If someone, yeah, please let me know if they know that. Uh, yeah. The, again, that going back to the frustration of things that they could easily change. If you are writing a screen cap utility, <laughs> it will be almost trivial to add that functionality. I mean, e either based on movement or based on video changes. But the fact that that isn't there makes it a real pain to actually use for what, for what I want to use it for. I I hope you find it solution. I, yeah. I think I think it's incredibly uh, instructional. Is that a word? Instructional. It could be a very good tool to 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 give people an idea of the thought process. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, want, that I wanted to go to actually show the thought process of doing the yeah. You know, a the mechanical process of how you know what I was going to do was intro and then just go through some of the features of my PCB software yeah. that I think are important. Why 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 like are you doing this? Well, I, well, no, but no, but the first step is. These are what I consider important things with PCB software. Mm -hmm. I can place a footprint, I can mm -hmm. rubber band it, I can, for example, the other good thing I can do is, if I've got like a lead array, I can take a lead, copy and paste it a hundred times to make the grid, I can draw one line, copy and paste that, and I can then say, all the copper that is on that board generate a net based on the things that this copper physically connects. Mm -hmm. So I can literally draw it almost as a graphic thing, hit a button, I've now turned that into a net list. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the sort of feature which... Yeah, it would be good to, and then actually go through a full built board layout, just showing the, 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 what the actual process is. But I think encapsulating that's going to be quite quite tricky. So I, the board I did was actually quite a complex one. I might wait till I've got another simpler design to do and redo it on that, because that'd be if nothing else, look, look quicker to edit. edit. Okay, uh, there's one more thing I want to tell you and and mention to you. Um, because we need to finish. We have a uh, ballpark club meetup in an hour at the Sheaf uh, in near London Bridge. So if you're listening and you're around London, you still have time to get there. Um, and but what I wanted to say, I, I you know, I, I appreciated your work, but I think one of the one of the things that um, made me uh, appreciate uh, the way you do things more is when you tweeted once about about. Or, and and I know I've noticed sense about about you messing up in trivial ways, like a wrong footprint yeah. on a PCB. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate that because people who might watch your videos or my video and we talk with a lot of times with a lot of confidence and and, and they assume that we, there's, there's no we don't make trivial mistakes. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, but it's it always on the simplest, the simplest trivia. You, know, you can do a stupidly complex board and it'll be perfect because it's complicated. You know, it's complex complicated so you try harder. Yeah. a simple trivial board. You yeah. don't put as much thought of it. Yeah. and then oh, so, oh sorry, I'll, I'll put that connector on back back yeah. to front or put it on the wrong side yeah. of the board or something. And <laughs> um, I think I think more people need to see that in the fact that you're tweeting it and you're tweeting with a picture of something embarrassingly mm. <laughs> or, you know you know what I mean right yeah yeah um, the, um, and then and then people see hey you know if you can make that mistake I, I can I, I shouldn't feel that uh, you know disappointed with myself mm. and particularly people who are who are learning or mm. uh, think it's not it's just, these mistakes happen all the time but you, you learn not most from, from your mistakes right if somebody could tell you check the footprint ten times, <laughs> you wouldn't do it until until you you, you you've spent well, uh, check five hundred. Check there are parts in stock before you order the PCB. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially uh, nowadays, especially those capacitors on there. That's getting a bit. Silly. Okay, is it? Is it? <laughs> oh, is, yeah. is, is, uh, I, I haven't noticed, yeah. but. Uh, well, Ben needs to know there's a project with capacitors. On it. Uh, well, <laughs> more certain capacitors size of ceramic there. capacitors. The, the really, yeah. If you need, yeah, if you need like several reels of them, the prices have got stupid. Did you key now? It gives you a warning, so warning the supply issues on these parts. Sort of, oh it's uh, getting a bit silly. I've uh, always wondered who would be in the market of making capacitors. I mean, you know, I can buy well, like yeah, you buy a reel of five thousand resistors for two quid. I mean, mm -hmm. how? How do the economics of yeah, that? Yeah, I, I would love to see I the know. factory that, where that, that, that stuff's made. I know. <laughs> 
Right. So uh, thanks again for, for, for celebrating your, 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 the nice things that you create and the nice things that, uh, or, or, the, or the things that, that went wrong. I, I want to do that more. Uh, I, I try to do that. And, and, and failure is just part of the experience. Uh, not failure, but I guess get, getting, getting the, stuff learning, wrong. Yeah, exactly. But fi failing early, so it's not your prototype or, the, yeah. you know, or something sufficiently trivial. That, okay, you yeah. have the bodge wire, like 50 yeah. boards, but it's not the end of the world. And, then, you know, <laughs> when things like that happen, I, I, I tell myself, you know, this is why I I, I mean, I, I scare the crap out of most of my customers because I all start outlining by e everything that could possibly go wrong. Yeah. So they only get a nice surprise when it all works, you know. <laughs> I know. Uh, that, that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this could catch fire, this could explode, this could, you know, <laughs> burn the building down. So let, this is what we're going to do to prevent that happening. <laughs> right. So thank you very much uh, for being the first uh, external ga Tim. guest of uh, the Boatport uh, Variety Show. We are going to London Bridge for the meetup and uh, see you, everyone, there and next time. Um, yeah. Oh, there's been... uh, it looks a pile of boards without mounting holes. Yes, <laughs> forgetting to put fiducials on boards and then having to use a component pad as a fiducial for a pick and place machine. Yep, done that one more more times than I really ought to have done. <laughs> well, there's probably a couple of hours of video just talking about those sort of mm. things, right? Yeah. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.